Awesome. So welcome, everyone. We are going to talk about OneNote and some other math tools that are going to help specifically elementary math teachers. Hopefully you had a chance to see our OneNote escape room earlier today. If not, we're going to make sure to follow up with an email that gets you that recording as well as the recording from today. Uh, but the slide deck we're going to be using, the PowerPoint, you'll see the link there, the cc.page slash OneNote math. I'm not sure, Coulter, if we can throw that in the chat as well. Um, but all of the slides here are yours to take and use, and so that link is going to get you to those slides. My name is Michelle Armstrong. I work here at the Cobblestone Collective. I'm based in Calgary. Um, I'm not a mathy. I am a former junior high educator, so also not really an elementary um, focused teacher, but we have two pretty amazing elementary educators with us today to walk us through all of these awesome tools. So let me turn it over to Coulter first. Coulter, tell us about you. Awesome. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Coulter Lewis. I'm from Niagara Falls, uh, currently bouncing between Niagara Falls and Toronto, uh, as my family is, is still there. So I, um, I was a primary school teacher. I taught some international schools around the world, which is a really great experience. And then I uh, started working with Microsoft and their ed tech team. And then um, in the last year and a half, I've been privileged to be here with Cobblestone um, using my Microsoft background to, to really support and, and help teachers and educators um, and students along the way. Uh, so I'm going to be running through just some basics of OneNote tonight, and then we're going to incorporate Sandra, who I will pass it over to now, and um, she'll be doing a little bit more math content and showing you the awesome lesson that she ran today, uh, how to create that, and how we can make it accessible for our students. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Sandra Chow. I'm uh, here in Beijing, China. I'm the Director of Digital and Innovative Learning at a school called Keystone Academy. And uh, I am originally from Ottawa and got my degree there in teaching, uh, but then started teaching in Toronto District School Board for many years. Uh, in, uh, and I was in primary, so I taught pretty much everything in primary. Uh, my sweet spot is junior, so I love four, five, six. And then spent some time in Taiwan, where I had my two kids and I taught there, and then came back to Canada, uh, taught again at Toronto District School Board, and then also worked at TVO for um, a few years. At TVO, I was uh, the um, the instructional liaison and worked a lot with Empower. Uh, so did a lot of math work there, really loved it. And now um, decided to go back overseas. Uh, we really wanted our, our children to have some global experience like we did. So um, being overseas has been really good for them to be able to see a world in a different way and to be displaced. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to start today's workshop and I'm going to just quickly start with just a quick land acknowledgement. I think it's really important that we recognize the lands that we're on uh, and where we're coming from. And, and uh, I'm currently in the Mississauga of the uh, Credits uh, land and I'm proud and, and privileged to be here and to be a part of this land. I've also am currently on the Treaty 13. Uh, I encourage you to check out native-land.ca, find out where you're from, share it with your kids as well, as we, uh, it's quite important and valuable for us to know where we're coming from. Uh, we have a quick little plan today. There's a little schedule. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of the live demo for us. So we'll be getting into OneNote. If you want to head over to office.com right now or your school's site, uh, portal or domain for your OP365 suite, uh, if you head over there now and sign in with your edu credentials so your school email i just posted a simple link the office link in the chat you can also use that and that will just let you uh, go a little bit more hands-on with us as we're going to walk through but i think it's important that i just maybe get a little gauge of where we're at with one note um if you could rank yourself from like a one to five what would you give yourself for one note uh zero being Today was like the first time you saw it in action or you've even heard of it. Five being uh, you integrate it all the time. This is a habitual thing for your students to be on. Awesome, Lindsay. Great.
Okay, yeah. So this is this is good to know because um, my plan was really just to go real basic right away, though, uh, and just sort of uh, allow you to to start from scratch. Uh, QH, if you have any specific questions, um, a little bit more uh, difficult ones that I might not cover, please feel free to unmute or just chime in in the chat. Uh, we are a nice intimate group this evening, so we're happy to tailor it to your needs and and your specific questions. Uh, so I think the first thing to know, hopefully while I'm sort of filibustering here, you're able to go and sign into your office.com. Um, well, I'm just going to explain what OneNote is. And I think of my, uh, another sort of question I might have for you is what do you think of when you took notes in school? When you were taking notes in elementary school, what was that one thing that you sort of made you remember about it? Um, I can remember taking notes. My time was spent sharpening my pencil. Um, now I feel like, I mean, we use pencils still all the time, but as we get older and, and a higher level elementary, we're kind of moving towards a little bit more digital. Um, when we did binders, when I think of three ring binders, I think of manila folders. Um, if a teacher spoke too quickly, you'd miss info. Yeah, uh, we're going to show you how you can record audio notes. And, and essentially what OneNote is, is it's a note taking tool and it's a digital binder. So I just wanted to sort of tap into what your thoughts and your memories of, of using a binder, a handheld binder is. Um, like those manila full, and I could always remember I had I had tough penmanship when I was younger, so I, I really couldn't write. I had big letters. And so I had those little small pieces of paper you had to fit in the color coded tab there. I could never fit my little chubby fingers in there with the big, huge pieces of writing. It was just a mess all the time. So I could never label my manila folder. I'm pinching my fingers and reinforcement, ribbing holes, right? Pinching your fingers in the three ring binders. I, yeah, definitely. Or if you accidentally broke the three ring binder and one of the things was off the, off to the side, when you flip the page, it started to make the little rips in the, uh, in your three, in your, uh, in the, in the holes in the paper. Um, definitely. That's a good one. I, I didn't think of that originally, but definitely used to pinch my fingers in that three ring binder thing. That's funny. So yeah, color coding everything, and that's that's sort of what OneNote is. OneNote is is really a a really nice tool for note taking. And there's a few different things that I don't want you to get confused with today. Um, we have OneNote and we have Class Notebook. Um, what you worked in with your students today was actually a, a just a regular OneNote, a personal digital binder. We didn't ha incorporate our students. Uh, we didn't have students in there, but that's a full another lesson. We're just going to really talk about the the real um, meat and potatoes of your OneNote and your personal digital binder, which you can share to students. It's definitely a collaborative tool if needed, um, but it's a little bit different because you don't actually have your students ha having their own sections there. And uh, it's just a little bit different setup. So today we're going to be in OneNote and notice that icon because there are two different icons. OK, and um, really, that's what I wanted to sort of show you. And now I'm going to switch over and actually do a little live demo. So hopefully over this little chit chat, you were able to get to your office.com and sign yourself in. And here's mine. So from your office.com, you have this is your this is your home page. Yours might look a little bit different. Yours might have your recent stuff um, all, all laid out there for you. Like this is this would be mine. But if you go to the bottom here, you can click on all apps. It's a little zoom in for you. It's a little window there. And if you hover your mouse, it should say all apps. And if you click on that, it'll open up the list of apps that you have access to. So you should be able to see these and. And have access to a handful of these tools. Um, yours might look a little bit different. This is my school board account. I'm, I'm currently with the Niagara District School Board. And um, my school board has a few different apps than your school board might. So <clears throat> from here, you can see we have Class Notebook. That's not the one we're in today. We're not going to be in Class Notebook. We want to be in just the regular OneNote. OK, and then you'll actually even see there's a staff notebook too. But we won't be in that one either. But the reason I want to do just a regular OneNote, because once you learn this one, it's so much easier to understand the student one as well. 
and, and it just transfers over really simply. It just you have your students there. So once you're here, click on OneNote, and then we're going to title our OneNote. Um, I've got one set up for math, but I'm just going to title this one Math Puzzles or Math Adventure because that's what we titled it today. And this is so great, Coulter. So Lindsay, thanks for jumping in. Like no idea that your board had access to all of these cool Microsoft tools. And so that's awesome if if you're just seeing that. If any of you are having troubles getting into your Office account, do be sure to just let us know. We're happy to just slip things down. Um, but this is this is great. Yeah, most boards have should have access to this. Um, I know the Niagara board, uh, they, they definitely have Google and Microsoft and there's a partnership there where they're working together or against one another and there's just so many different programs that we can use but you definitely have access to this students should have access to this as well um, students get free office accounts until they lose their education domain so once you lose that edu account then the students will lose it. so they could technically have it from now until uh, post university as long as they have an education domain they'll, they will have access to those types of tools and so we'll get into our one note um, maybe in the chat, could you give me a thumbs up or just let me know that you're good to go and I can move on and and you're you're ready to go. Oh, I'll wait another minute or so. I want I don't want to lose anybody. And if you're having a tough time getting in and you can't, I can give you a little demo account for today. So you can actually go in and play around with stuff. Looks like we're they're jumping in. Lindsay's in, Jody's in. Oh, Rosella just taking notes and watching. That's awesome. Our other Lindsay's in. That's great. Perfect. Somebody has their hand up. Yeah, if you have your hand up, do you have a question? Or just sampling out what the hand raising function is? And it looks like, yeah, Jody, you've got your hand up. Did you have a question? Sorry, no, accidentally. <laughs> My totally computer fine. is too slow. <laughs> no, that is absolutely okay. Trying That's to unhand. <laughs> no worries. We can, you got it unhanded. <laughs> it's good to play. <laughs> Perfect. So um, from your OneNote, once you're here, you have this blank canvas and that's essentially what it is. But we need to first add our sections or if I think of this as a three ring binder, we want to start adding those manila folders in. So there's my first section. I can do that right at the bottom where it says add section. I'll zoom in here, but it will say add section. Oops, going back. There we go. And Coulter, Rosella is, is just wondering, do you have one of those demo accounts handy that you could just throw in the chat? Yeah, I definitely can. Nice. And if anybody else would like a demo account to check out the Office 365 tools, just let us know. I think Coulter's got a handful over there. So just give me a second here. It's just taking a second to load. But um, I want you right now, while it's just sort of loading for me, if you can see that section button, click on section and uh, add yourself a new section and title it. Now we can do it different ways. Today I know Sandra's going to take over and she's going to show you how we created that sec that that ex uh, adventure today. But the way we want to divide it uh, normally would be for any sort of content you want to break it apart. But so maybe it's going to be geometry, or maybe it's going to be a simple arithmetic or division. Uh, however you want to divide this up. It also can be based on your units. So the units or lessons that you're teaching, you can break and add sections up that way. Uh, so this is the username that you can use. And I'll give you the password here. And as culture kind of enters the, the usernames, um, our, our kids in at TDSB, we actually did a pilot using OneNote for a special um, for um, many of our uh, special needs kids. And it was fantastic because they were able to take notes and exactly how culture was mentioning 
when we were helping them to organize their binders, each notebook was a subject, and then we taught them to use the sections to um, as as um, the units in that subject. And it was fantastic because they could take pictures. We had them on surfaces. They were taking pictures. They could annotate. Um, they could record what they were saying or record what the teacher was saying in a lesson so that later on they could refer to it. So OneNote was very versatile. So yeah, add those sections in. Again, I'm just going to add three here, but I would if you could add two or three, that'd be great. So you can feel confident doing this on your own. And then in each section, you can see there are my tabs. I can actually color code my tabs here. If I now I'm on a Mac, so it's going to be a little bit different depending on your uh, device. But you can right click. My Mac is a two finger click. If you're on a uh, Chromebook, it's a two finger tap, I believe. Uh, and then you can color code these. So that does help with uh, some visual, any visual discrepancies or, or difficulties. It's definitely a, a nice um, option there. And so each section, I want you to just add a page. You can drop a page in there and you can title that page. Maybe this one is your first division, so um, single digits or something. Okay, and then we can head on over to multiplication and do the same thing. Add a page in there and you can add more pages. And with these pages, you just title it by putting the title of the page above the date. And if you want to make a sub page, you can right click the sub page and it says make a sub page there. So you can just make a sub page. Okay, and if you can, just add a couple sections, add a couple pages. And we're going to play around in these pages tonight pretty informally just so you get familiar with these tools and you see that you can do a few different really powerful options to support your students. And uh, when I first, my first ever, ever interview actually with Microsoft was, um, they asked me to create a OneNote within about uh, 25 minutes and I had to sort of create a lesson with it. So I used it to um, showcase the seven different types of learning styles. I believe there's nine now, but uh, at the time I used it to showcase there's seven different ways to uh, make sure that we approach each student and we can use those seven ways in OneNote quite easily. So we have the auditory function where we can insert an audio note and I know Sandra is going to show you that, but then you have the visual stuff where we can insert a picture. So if you'd like right now, specifically with math, you can click on the insert tab. So we have these very familiar tabs here at the top. We have home, insert, draw, that's a pretty standard across a lot of the Microsoft programs now. And you might be familiar with them from a while ago when we first started using Word and WordPerfect. Um, but if we clicked on insert, you can see you've got a few options there. Now mine's grayed out right now because it, it, it recognizes my mouse is not in a spot where I can insert anything. So I just need to click on the blank canvas here. And now it's it's available for me to insert things. So I can insert a picture here, nice and simple. I can go from a camera or from a file, or I can choose from an online source, which would be Bing. Yeah, so Lindsay, just uh, click on the white, white canvas there on a space uh, anywhere at all, because that's what OneNote is. It's just this big, massive whiteboard, essentially. So if you click anywhere, it should then recognize that your computer is is available to or that space is available to hold a picture or an audio note and so, then lindsay i'd like to also jump in so lindsay's having trouble getting a sub page which so am i for some reason my unit one i don't have the option it's grayed out but unit two and unit three my my second and third pages i can make sub pages is there a reason why you can't make a sub page on the first page um, make sure that it's the second page that you're clicking. Um, if you just do a single page, you might not have the ability to actually make a sub page. Great. Got out. As long as it's the second page, then you have to just have that second page there. That makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So uh, it's your turn right now. I'm going to let it 
uh, we'll, we'll give you some play time right now, but ideally we're going to add in a pitcher. And you can see you can add those links there too, just to make it a nice hyperlink. But the big one I want you to try out here is the audio note. So if you clicked on audio note, what happened? Oh, sorry, I know Sandra, you want to talk about this, but I'm already here. Sorry. <laughs> I saw it there, it's got the red dot and it just attracted me. And, and, and I think it's such a nice, powerful tool that we could use uh, and that students can use too, because if students created something like this, um, then, then they're able to add in their audio notes and they can dictate things that you can listen to or that Maybe it's note taking that again, you're you're making or they're making the notes and they're making those connections. So inserting an audio note for them is a really nice option and uh, or for you to, to provide some directions or some instructions is also a really nice feature. So all I did was I clicked on that record button. It started to record. I clicked stop. And now I've got these. It's just going to load here. It's once it finishes loading. I there's my audio note. And now I can move it around this page to again. I, it's really nice that this is such an open canvas that wherever I want to put my mouse, I can start typing. And I can grab that. Text box here and I can start moving that around. And then go left and right and, and up and down and it's. I've yet to see a OneNote run out of space, so you have no worries about storage or file storage in here. Um, I think it's a terabyte actually just in one note alone, and that doesn't contribute to your. Outlook or your sorry or your OneDrive, your SharePoint storage, so um, you don't have to worry about that. But here's my audio note. I can just press sure, sure, sure. audio notes and they can dictate things that you can listen to or that maybe it's note taking that again you're you're making or they're making the notes and they're making those connections. So. So that's enough of listening to my voice on a recording, <laughs> um, but it, it, this is just a real basic introduction about how you can insert some of these options here in OneNote, and it's definitely going to help as Sandra talks about how we created that workshop this morning um, and how she was able to add some of these nice features in there like the pictures. You can even add some files, um, and I know Sandra's going to talk about inserting some forms, but I just want you to be comfortable with this making sure that you have any questions, please, please feel free to do so now. Um, but it is really uh, what I would think would be nice and user friendly. Um, so I've worked with students um, up to grade two, actually. Grade two is the youngest I've seen on OneNote working autonomously, creating problems and, and solving, solving things on their own using OneNote because it is that, um, like I said, user friendly. I don't think there's a better term than user friendly. It's just a nice, easy, simple platform for students to, to get familiar with. There is that learning curve, but once they do, they're able to, to really start showcasing a lot of their learning and staying organized, I think is a really nice, important factor as well in one note. So. Yeah, you might have to enable your microphone. You're right. So um, I think this is where I wanted to just get you started by adding your sections by um, really making sure that you know that there is that insert piece where you can insert a bunch of these tools. Uh, the last one I didn't really show us was this dictate function under the home button. So you can always dictate as well. So I can click on that and there's that dictation. And now it's going to follow my words and, and throw down whatever I'm saying. It's pretty good. The downside with the dictation right now is that there is minimal grammar, so it actually doesn't pick up on my commas that are needed or peer periods. I would need to say period again, period. So so there's always importance that we go back and we edit when we're dictating, but that's a great learning option for students, uh, especially younger students that we really need to hone in on. Hey, you need to reread your stuff. You need to reread and edit. I'm going to stop dictating now. And I guess my last wow factor, hopefully I'll get this one out here, is that was dictating. And I'd love for you to have a second to play with that in just a second, but I'm going to run out of time here. And I don't want to overwhelm you, but I just got so many cool things I want to show you. <laughs> and um, the last thing I want to show you is when we do dictate, we have our speech to text 
we can now have our text to speech by using the immersive reader tool. And the immersive reader tool is a really powerful option and it's found in, I want to say at least a dozen of Microsoft's tools and programs because of how supportive of emerging readers and writers it is or English language learners or any language because you're actually also a translation function. So when I clicked on immersive reader, you can see my text size is nice and big. So that's the accessibility option. I can change that if I want. And my students can. I have my Krillium colors for students with any visual difficulties. And then I have my magic wand here and I can click on my magic wand and there's my grammar notes so I can see my parts of speech. My verbs, my nouns, my adjectives, my adverbs, and I can even show the showcase those labels there. We're getting a really nice option for our language art aspect. And to support that, I have my syllables if needed. And this is my favorite because I know when I'm teaching my students or when we were in grade two, we had, um, we would just pull our rulers out. And when my students, and it's just, sometimes their desks were just cluttered with things and they would, so it's just a nice option, this line focus here. And when I press play. This is just an example. So I can click on the dictate dictation and now it's. <laughs> so it's really nice because you see I read some errors or listened to some errors there already. So it's so super important that we can showcase this to our students to, to support some editing. Um, and then I can translate if I must or if I need to. You can see the languages there. Really nice options. Um, to support all different types of students in different languages. Coulter, could you show us again, how did you get to the immersive reader? I'm actually not seeing it on my side. Sure, I went into view. Ah, view menu, perfect. And then it's there with the book and the speaker. And that's your little icon. You might not actually see where it says immersive reader. It might just be the icon of the book with the speaker, but it, it should be, you should see everything. Um, but here's that translation function. I'm just going to, I wanted to go to French quickly. Um, and then I wanted to show you that from here, you have the option to translate by the word or the whole document. And then you have my picture dictionary that is turned on. So I can now click on these words and have a, a picture support that. And here it is in French. Example. Here it is in French. Example. OK, so there's so many different words that have picture dictionaries, but some do not. Not everyone does, but there's a lot of them that will. OK, so oh, let's see if I get one more to go. There we go. Yeah. OK, and that's the dictate, and that is the last one for me. And <clears throat> There is a lot more to explore in OneNote. Um, this is just your quick 25 minute rundown, get you started, get you set up. I'm gonna pass this over to Sandra now, who's gonna highlight what she did today uh, and, and just showcase some of those really cool tools. And we'll, we're here to answer any questions. I'll be in the chat uh, or feel free to unmute your microphone and we can definitely support any specific questions you might have. Thanks, Coulter. Um... So just a quick show, if you can type in the chat, uh, how many people um, were part of the lesson today? And while you do that, I'm gonna load my screen up. Do you have a question? I see your hand pop up. Nice story, Coulter, was that to me? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so I was fooling around in the one notes and I was taking out a photo I put in and yep. somehow I deleted my whole note. Is there a way to go back and undo that or do I have to start all over again to reopen? Um, you deleted the whole notebook or you deleted just what you had on the page? No, it looks like the whole notebook. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it should be saved automatically in your, in your drive, like your OneDrive. Okay. So if you went back to like office.com and then click on the cloud. Okay, and then access it from there. And you can access it from there. Um, okay. Alternatively, if it's not there, um, you can go to your, uh, if you clicked on the OneNote icon, you should be able to see my notebooks. Um, 
And then if you did lose it again, it's still probably in SharePoint. There, it takes a lot to delete something. So um, it's going to be there. It just needs to be found. OK, I will take a look. <laughs> OK, and Rosella, no worries. I might just uh, give a little quick summary of the lesson um, in case others also were not able to attend the lesson. So um, here is the OneNote that um, we used for the lesson this morning. Um, my evening yesterday, <laughs> but uh, you can see that I was able to use the sections and then the pages to create the lesson. And um, ho hopefully, um, maybe Coulter or uh, or Michelle can post the link to the puzzle in there as well, just in case those who aren't here for the lesson can also get the link. But I just organized this notebook in such a way that the students could actually pop through the different sections. Um, I had, it was a puzzle. So each section was a different puzzle that they were exploring and we decided to go with the theme. So you can tell that um, OneNote, you can actually make it quite attractive as well. You can change the font, you can add pictures and organize the canvas however you want. And then when I went into the pages, you can even add in um, emojis to the title, which I find often gives the students a visual cue of where to go next and what to do. So in this case, um, I had a welcome page and then a puzzle, which it's taking its time to load right now. Um, and then once they had the puzzle, it's looking wonky, but it didn't look wonky <laughs> once you load it. Um, then, then they could actually um, enter their answer. And then I had a learn more section, which was kind of an extension for those who wanted to learn more. And you can see you can add links, um, you can embed videos into it. So as soon as I pasted a link of a video, uh, OneNote recognizes uh, YouTube links, changes it to the title, and then embeds the YouTube as well. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'm just gonna see if the puzzle page, okay. So here was the puzzle page. So um, you're able to actually embed links within a OneNote as well, but there were some um, funny, I think it's because it was my domain, the links didn't quite work yesterday. But um, if you just click on a section, you can also copy links to section and embed them within so you can link back and forth. Um, so that's kind of handy as well. So the way that um, the, the lesson worked was there was a welcome and then a puzzle, and then they had to figure out what the answer to this puzzle was. So to get into puzzle two, they had to enter a password. And I protected this section with a password so that they couldn't enter it unless they clicked on it and put in the answer, which in this case, it was 30 because there were 30 sarsen stones around the outer ring of Stonehenge. And once I typed in 30, then it opened up my puzzle for puzzle two. So it was kind of like a hidden escape room. Um, and so each one of these sections have been password protected so that the students cannot enter it unless they solve the puzzle. It makes it quite handy. And just like Coulter was saying, it's very versatile. I can rearrange and lay out things the way I want to, so I could move um, the uh, text around. Um, I've got drawing tools that I can use to highlight certain things. So um, in this puzzle uh, adventure, if you go to the teachers only section, again, password protected, so I can hide my notes in there for a lesson if I want to which is handy. Um, I, the, the password is cobblestone. So you can just type in cobblestone. And once you're in there, um, there are the answer key. So that's handy in case I forget what the answer key to any of the other ones are. Um, so each, these are the um, answer key for the puzzles and one note Math for Elementary, which brings you to this notebook here. Um, and then I also have a section on how to password protect. So in order to password protect, 
I, I've put the link here and um, instructions and steps on how. Oops, this just popped up. <laughs> no worries. Okay, and um, you can see actually when you right click on here, in the web version, there is no option to password protect. And that's because the only way you can do this currently, I'm not sure if the, um, if, yeah, the only way to do this is if you have the app version. So to download the app, the app has a little bit more features. It is free. You just need to go to onenote.com slash download. It's a free download and you can see right here, it doesn't expire like it used to. So I don't know if you remember back then, you had when you ha um, purchased Microsoft Word, you would have to update to the 97 version or the 2000 version. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, it is free, it doesn't expire, and you can use OneNote for as long as you like. So that's a handy, handy um, software that you I would recommend to download. So once you download it, then when you're using the OneNote version, and it's still connected to the web. So you can see over here on the right, I have a little cloud with a check mark on it. Um, that's because, oops, and I'm on a different one. When I'm over here, I can open in the desktop app. And once I open it in the desktop app, then it, so let me just get out of this notebook. Oops, and go into a puzzling math adventure. Now, if I right click on a section, there's this password protection option. And so if I were to add a section, for example, and say sample password, um, now if I right click on that, I can go to password protection and again right click is the two finger tap if you're a mac or a chromebook um, or if you have a mouse you can just type the right click and then you can say protect this section so once i click that it'll say now enter password for this new section um, it is case sensitive so you have to be careful um, you can put numbers you can put um, letters but you can't put symbols. So if I type in, oh, actually you can. Uh, so let's say I'm gonna put in test and then verify, test again, and then I can set the password. You do have to remember whether or not you put um, uppercase or lowercase. Now, if I click out of it and come back into this page, Just taking a little bit of time to load this lock appears and um, it's unlocked because I just created it but I can lock it so if I lock the section now it's locked so if I wanted to go into this I just click here or press command U option um, on the web version you just have to enter and then my password was test um, and you can see there's an option to use your fingerprint as well. And unlock, and now I'm in. So again, same thing, I, I can add pages, I can um, make them sub pages. So very cool. And then the other thing is, let's say I'm like, uh, I don't want to password protect this section anymore. I wanted to remove the password I can, or change the password, I can do that. So if I wanna remove the password, I just have to type in test again, my password, remove the password protection. And now if I click out and back into it again, the lock is gone. So that's how you very easily can um, password protect, protect a section. Any questions with that before I move on? I think it's just a friendly reminder that we have this in a slide deck for you and there's a recording. So if we are going a little bit too fast or you think you might have missed something, 
uh, always feel free to refer back to those those two options. Uh, or again, we, we don't have a problem if you if you want to see it again. We're happy to show you, or we can be back an extra five minutes and, and catch you up as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also the teachers only section has a page called password protection. So if you forget, um, there's notes here from Microsoft, which are pretty step by step. But you can see here's the key, the two key pages, um, the teachers only, um, where you click right click on the, the image. And then once you right click, that's how you password protect. And remember, it is only here for the um, app versions. Maybe I should type that in. This only works for the app version. And on that note, Sandra, can you just tell us again, depending on what device you have, how do you get that app version? And then I guess the answer to that question, um, is it available on Chromebooks? Which I think that answer is no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that if you have, say you have Apple or Windows Windows device, is there just one website you go to? Yeah, here it is. Oh, OneNote.com slash download. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So um, I, I can stick that in here too. So that you have that. Um, so that's just how that was how um, the uh, password protection part worked, and that was mainly the the backbone of of the puzzle. Um, the other thing is, I added, for example, in the um, puzzles, I also added the audio for instructions just to make sure that the the kids could. Um, understand in case there were some kids who weren't able to read. Um, so I did add some audio instructions into that as well. Uh, so, oops, there it is. And um, kind of a, a, a note about the audio instructions, if you right click on it, oh, there you go, sorry. So you have to click on it and then, right, oh, wait, wait, come on. One second. It's very slow reacting right now. You can actually rename the file, which is what I just wanted to show you quickly. Um, and um, so I was able to uh, rename these files so that the students would know, oh, well, what is this audio? Um, let me just put this here and add a new one. Um, okay. So again, when you go into insert and the app version also has an audio. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go here. I think it's a little slow. Okay, so see, when I'm clicking on it, there's this rename option. And so that allows me to rename the, the audio into uh, whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna use the app version because um, my internet here is just a little bit slow right now. And uh, the app version allows me to be a little bit quicker. quicker. Um, but it does update. Um, as you can see, this cloud, it updates it onto the cloud as well. So. Um, the next thing uh, that was pretty fun to add at the very end of this puzzle was a form. So if you go to this finish line and the answer was Bravo, and you unlock it, you'll notice, oops, not this one, sorry, puzzle five. And this one was the longer one, two, five, nine, two, one, zero, zero. Oh, that's not right. Two, nine, five, two, one, zero, zero. Let me go back. The answer key, oh, Winnipeg, right. Okay, so Winnipeg. And so when you're in here, I, I put in a Microsoft Forms. And the nice thing about the forms is you can um, have multiple questions in one. And then um, the students 
had to answer all these questions in order to get the answer or the clue to the finish line. And this is uh, a little bit of what it looked like. So here's the quiz. So let's say they only got two correct. Then the first one said that's incorrect. And then the second one said correct answer, copy down this letter. And then the same thing with the third one, they got that right. But then the fourth one is incorrect and the fifth one is incorrect. So um, if they wanted to do the, the quiz again, then they could submit another response and try it again. So um, I tried to make it in such a way that it wasn't a one time they couldn't go back at it. I wanted it to be a, a growth mindset experience for the students. So um, by taking the quiz again, they could try to get all of the answers. And obviously they can um, they can go crazy and just try all the permutations. Um, and that would have taken a lot longer <laughs> and some math as well, actually, to figure out which ones were the right permutations. But um, that's how I, uh, I added the quiz. So in OneNote, you can also add quizzes. So just as an example, if I wanted to add in um, a, a quiz in here, um, you'll notice, and this is where it's tricky, you'll notice that you can't insert a Microsoft form in the app version. So now I have to go back to the web version to do this. And that opens up a little bit more options for me. Um, so in the app ver in the web version, you'll see, so here's a sample Microsoft Forms. Um, I can insert audio. There's math options, which um, we didn't show today, but there's a lot of really cool math tools that are available in the web version, such as write your equation in ink, and it can recognize it. Um, it can, you can even type, this works in the app version too, but you can even type in simple um, equations. So I don't, three plus four equals, and I just type in enter. Um, I know we're getting pretty short on time, and I know Coulter, you were going to dive in and show the math too. But Sandra, while you're there, I, this is one of my favorite features of OneNote. Like, you thought your mind was blown before. Um, Sandra, do you want to spend just an extra couple seconds just on some of those math features in OneNote? Sure. Um, it does automatically calculate. I'm not sure why. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, but you can see that there's some. Um, you can put in equations um, for elementary. I didn't find I needed as much of these equations, but you can also graph um, from this as well. Um, and. Uh, Let me do you want me to walk you through it, Sandra? Sure. So for sure, like if so, Sandra's typed in an equation. If you go to math, you see where. Um, yep. Click there. Then you should have a select feature. Where's the select feature, Coulter? This is where we need you. That's going to be in the draw. Ah, it's in the draw menu. This is worth it, you guys. <laughs> so there, uh, go to the marquee select. And then just select your, your equation. And keeping in mind, this works for simple equations like 3 plus 4. Then we go to math. And then look over on the right-hand side you've got some options so we can round this. We can get the factor. I don't even know what any of those are. Um, and then it gives you the solutions, which maybe this one's, oh, it's actually not that simple. Well, that's good. It gives you an instructions, but then the beautiful part I love, if you scroll to the right, Sandra, it's usually over on the right-hand side. I don't know if, Kind of, kind of hides. Maybe you can't scroll right. Sometimes, depending on the question, I'm, I'm uh, not sure what you're looking for there, but sometimes, depending on the question, it, it won't offer all the uh, extra things. Like if you're looking to make a quiz on this one, yeah, this quiz, you might need to add a different type of question because sometimes uh, you can add those forms and it populates this brand new, really nice questionnaire type or. or up to 10 questions, I believe it populates for you to, to give your mm -hmm. students similar type questions. 
I'm yeah. not sure plus four isn't doing that for you though. Yeah. Uh, all right, but for sure, encourage you all to just test it out. Um, you can even handwrite your equations and then it recognizes those equations. Um, and then typically it lets you, it, it builds a form for you. Like if you want 10 practice questions, boom, you've got a form um, with 10 practice questions. Oh, this is fun. I think it's really nice too. You can take that solutions and you can drag and drop that over right into the whiteboard. So that can be or into the into the OneNote. So you can actually have that there for your students as well. So it's it's not just going to be there on the right hand side. It's going to be able to be on that um, right next to that equation. So students can always see that they don't have to go through those steps. And there's immersive reader again. So you can reach those students and support that student um, and, and really allow them to, to have that right back to them. Sandra, you're having a tough time highlighting it. Just start a little bit lower. You're doing close. You're close. Just start a bit a little bit lower and then yeah, make it really big. There you go. And I love that Sandra's just kind of learning as she goes, which is great. <laughs> click and on math again, Sandra. So up at the top right, click on math. So this you'll see, oh wait, what do we want to do? Um you can wow, like graphing. And bye-bye. So Sandra, you can drag and drop that graph onto the page. You should be able to. Maybe you have to click it. Oh, there it says insert on page. Sorry, it says insert on page. Down just below it. Yep. So, but yeah, so many different applications inside OneNote. It's just amazing. And you can see I don't use this function very often. <laughs> um, but uh, coming back to um, the insert the forms, um, I actually didn't insert from this option. I actually created my form first uh, from forms um, so that there I could see I could choose the form that I already created. But you could create a new form or a new quiz from scratch right here as well. Um, before I um, so if I go into new quiz, then it would create a new quiz for me. But I wanted to, I've already pre-created a quiz over here. I wanted to show the features of um, the forms here so that you can see how I um, made the different answers. So here is, once you come into a form, you just name it, like um, very similar to Google form if you're used to that, uh, name quiz, and then you can put a description here of the quiz. The nice thing about um, forms now is you can also uh, bold and italicize and underline. So you can change the formatting of the text right into it. And, one, and then you add a new question. So if I add a new question, you have many different options. You can do multiple choice, text, rating, date, um, all of these are, are possible options, but because I was doing a quiz, I wanted to choose a multiple choice question. Um, and once you choose that, then you can also make that a multi answer or you can just keep it as one answer that's correct. So um, if you have your question here, so math, or let's say I put in the, the math question, actually I can show the math feature. So I can put in, um, let's say, 42 uh, times 8. Um, then then you can actually put in uh, options for answers. And so if I type in math, oops, you can see that there's a lot of different options that you can put in in terms of the answer. So if it's an equation option, um, mine is not um, an equation option because I'm elementary math. So I can just type in, uh, let's say 300 as an option. Usually it does put in, uh, it does, AI does pop up in terms of giving um, possible solutions. Um, so I'm just gonna put in a, a different answer and then I can type in, and then depending on what the answer is, so 320 plus 
16, I think it's 336. Okay. So now I can then choose which one's the right answer. So if this is the answer, that's the right answer. And if I would just preview it and I can put in submit, um, I can view results and say, oh, well, that was the wrong answer. Um, but the nice thing about Microsoft is there's an option here to display a message to respondents who select this answer. So you can give feedback right away on your quizzes. I can say um, this is the incorrect answer. And I can give um, some please review notes from yesterday. And same thing, I can um, copy that and I can make that the answer for all of them. So in my case, for the math quiz here, I had the question, the correct answer, and then for all the incorrect answers, I said try again because it was a breakout. And then in the correct answer, I said um, correct answer, but here's the secret code. So that's why in this situation here, when um, when they were able to put in their answers, uh, the secret code would appear for the different. So when I submitted and I view the results. Um, when I view the results, then it actually gave me the, the code from earlier. Oh, it didn't work. Let me try that again. I think that time's running out, so um, just gonna summarize this. Okay, so some view results, and then you can see the incorrect answer, and then the correct answer gave me the code. So coming back to the OneNote in the teacher section, this Microsoft Forms, I've kind of put um, instruction on how to create the form, insert a form, and then I've also put in just how I answered the questions here. And then you also have to set your settings for the quiz. So if the students get the answer wrong, I wanna make sure that the results show immediately and anyone can respond. So you wanna set the quiz in the settings so that it's in such a way. Um, so over here on the top right, the settings are just these three dots, the ellipses, and go to settings. And I have to make sure this is open and anyone can respond. And, um, and then that way, the quiz will work out just the way that this puzzle has done it. Um, and then just some final thoughts. Um, you can make the puzzles quite fun by adding in other websites. So there are some websites that have been integrated with OneNote um, and embed really easy, easily. So you can see um, out of this list, there's some probably some apps you might recognize like Wakelet, um, Ad, Ad puzzles, one I use quite often. Uh, GeoGebra is another math tool. Flipgrid can be embedded right into it. So here's just an example of how Flipgrid can be embedded into your OneNote. Um, and it, you, the students don't even have to leave the page. You can just um, see everything right in the, the OneNote. Um, see, you can just log in and do everything right in the page. So it's very handy. Um, and then you can embed PowerPoint. So here's a PowerPoint that was already, um, I actually created these pictures using PowerPoint um, and I downloaded it using Slides Go template. So here's the Slides Go logo. If you guys have ever needed web PowerPoint templates, um, Slides to Go has amazing ones. Um, and you'll see it at the very end that this is a Slides to Go template. Slides go. Um, and you can also add grid backgrounds um, as well. So if you want to draw and whatnot, you can um, add grid backgrounds and that can be done um, just by going into the view section and then paper style and you can pick the different um, grids. So that's really handy for math. 
Um, I know our time is up, so I'm going to pass the time back. <laughs> Sandra, I could stay here all night and just listen to all of this coolness. Um, but again, if you did, if you all missed um, Sandra's one note, it's I put it back in the chat there. Everything Sandra just showed us is in that teachers only section. And how fun is that? Using the one note, you know, instead of a PowerPoint to to present or to collect all of our info is also brilliant. Um, just such a, a such a cool tool. Um, so yeah, we I know we're over time, but if you want to um, ask any questions, you certainly can. Uh, QH, what is the link for the embedded game? Zuh, games. I'm not sure if I understand the question, um, but if Coulter or Sandra, if you if you. No, I'm I, I just clarity on the question as well. Yeah, perfect. Okay, oh, uh, so she was talking about like you can embed things from the um, like Flipgrid or something that that list in the end that she was mentioning. Yeah. 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 So that list um, is in the teacher section. So if okay. you go into the game and go to the teacher section, you'll see the all the whole list of all the games you can embed and how to embed them as well. Oh, okay. But for Oh, OK, OK, I thought that is something separate. OK, yeah, yeah, but to embed the Flipgrid, all I did was paste the Flipgrid URL and it automatically renders. And same with YouTube. If I paste the YouTube link, it automatically embeds the video right into the OneNote. So students don't have to leave to go to YouTube to see the video, which is really handy. And it also eliminates a lot more of the, the advertisements. Yep, thanks. Excellent. Awesome. And Coulter, thank you as well for posting in those links again, Coulter, with all the cool little emojis. Uh, Coulter also put in a code to redeem for a PD certificate on the Microsoft um, education site. Microsoft is funding this workshop. They're funding a whole lot of the work we do, and it's thanks to teachers like you um, submitting in those codes to say, yep, I took this workshop give us more workshops. Um, so anyway, so I put a little heart by that uh, link there that Coulter posted. If you redeem your code, that would be greatly appreciated.